Hello there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. You don't know how strange that sounds for me to hear myself say that. I never in a million years thought I'd be starting a YouTube channel. But um, basically, it was the best way for me to share uh, this with my Facebook followers. So I'm assuming that the only people that are going to see this are my Facebook followers, but just in case anyone in the world happens to find this or it gets shared or anything, um, I, I'll back up and do a little bit of a description. So I am basically, I guess I'd say I was a maker. And um, for the last several years, I've been making jewelry. And I sell that on my website called heartandsoulfuldesign.com. And I'll put links to all this on my page. Once I get it all organized, you'll be able to find me on all the different social media that I'm on. Um, but basically I started doing jewelry many years ago and I have a small following on Facebook and I use Facebook as kind of a, here's what I'm working on today kind of thing. Get first dibs if you want something done custom. It's just kind of, uh, let someone like me who's an introvert and spends all day in the studio by myself, um, kind of a connection to the outside world. So I really 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 appreciate my Facebook family because they they do give me that human connection so I hope that you watch this and that you'll leave your comments and shares and likes and all that in Facebook because you know that if you do that you get in the monthly drawing and usually it's like a hundred dollar gift card for jewelry so um, anybody's welcome to do that but you have to do that over on my Facebook page which is also called Heart and Soulful. Um, I also knit in the evening because I can't sit still, so I have an Etsy shop where I sell all my knitting, mostly neck warmers and scarves and that kind of thing, cowls and stuff. And then I share everything on Pinterest, of course, and Instagram and that sort of thing. So anyway, it, it turned out where normally on Facebook I do a post where if I'm showing a process in jewelry making or something, I don't really do how-to things, even though I've been asked to do classes, I'm not a public speaker so that doesn't feel comfortable for me but um, this project uh, since I went down the rabbit hole a few months ago with mixed media and art journaling and that kind of thing I started sharing those things on Facebook also and this latest project I did a video last Saturday um, that I just did it with my cell phone and, and put it on Facebook and the quality wasn't very good so I was talking to my son who's kind of an expert in that area and uh, we decided that maybe if I try posting it on a YouTube channel, then share it to my Facebook, that it would be a better quality. So I'm still working on it. I'm still new to this. So bear with me. Um, if I'm going to keep doing it, I, I will try to improve my setup. But um, for now, I just wanted to show you this project that I had been working on. Um, it was a lot of fun, and I just think anybody can do it. So if you want to join me down the rabbit hole, um, it all started just a few months ago, I, I guess with the whole COVID thing. I didn't feel great about promoting jewelry and that kind of thing with so many people struggling and it just gave me an opportunity to maybe spend some time exploring some things that I've always wanted to do but just never taken the time. And in addition to my jewelry, I um, also make my own displays and I got the idea that I wanted to have them be more artistic and kind of a mixed media feel. If you know my brand at all, you know that my packaging and everything is that kind of a feel, kind of a bohemian kind of thing. So I started making some display pieces and playing around with that. And in doing so, I found altered books and then people wanted to know if I would sell those at the craft show if I do it, which got canceled this year. But I thought I can put those on my website too. And anyway, it's gotten me into this whole new world that I didn't even know anything about. Um, so I thought I would approach this again because I'm aiming this at my Facebook followers as, um, as if they're like me and new to this whole mixed media journaling kind of thing. And um, I know that when I watch videos, I've found so many talented people with great ideas and, and they walk you through some of them, you craft right along with them. And then some do kind of a, a more sped up version where they voice over and that's pretty fancy for me, but um, it's really helpful. And so I thought I would share, I love learning new things. And so I thought I would share with my Facebook family um, the things that I've learned and the tools and different things as if you don't know anything about it like I didn't. 
Um, so hopefully it will inspire you to do your own project. So if you watched my video last Saturday or whenever it was, um, I was working on this uh, junk journal and I got the idea from Robin Dudley House and I'll put her link to her tutorial in, in the description along with, if I can find links to all the different things that I use, I'll try to put those there too, just to make it easier for you. She had gotten this idea from a couple other people. I went and kind of watched her video back again because it had been a little while. And um, she mentioned that she got the idea from them. So I, I think in, now that I've watched a few of hers, she kind of crafts, uh, she'll see some idea, and then she, her video is just you crafting along with her. So I think she's kind of winging it in a way as she goes too. So when I did this one, I had a couple ideas that I wanted to try for my second one. So I've kind of finished this one enough to show you, and then I've started a second one where I can actually walk you through um, some of the ideas that I had and how to, in the order to do things I thought might be a little easier for me. So um, anyway, I want to show you in case you saw the first one, kind of how this ended up. It's to the point now where it's really just the journaling part and doing some of the more decorative things, but it gives you an idea because I have some of the cards already um, finished that you can kind of see where this can go. Um, of course, you'll use your own style and your own imagination and take it, you know, take it from there. So basically this is a junk journal that's made from a recycled file folder in six recycled envelopes. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you the, the finished product first so you can see if you want to even do it. And then um, from there I will um, show you the parts and pieces. So basically the front of the book is the stacked envelopes that kind of open on each other. And then the inside, there's a tie that holds all that together. And then the inside of the book is your uh, art journal par portion. So you can, you can art journal on these pages. You can do different kind of paper. And the other one that I'm going to show you, I've used different paper. Um, I used mixed media paper in this one because I had the size was about right for my book. Um, and then I just rounded the corners, make it nice with a little corner punch that I wouldn't really recommend this one. It, it works for me, but I had to actually take it apart to get it to work, so I won't, I won't put a link to that one. Um, but that does the little corners nice. And then on this one, I did this all at the end, the inside of the book. I did the envelope portion first, on the next one, I'm doing it the opposite. I think it's much easier to do this inside portion before you have it bulky from all the envelopes. So I'll walk you through that when I get to that point. But this one, the reason I decided that is because I used um, vintage piano forte music for, the, for this because the piece almost fit perfectly. I had to trim a little bit, but I already had my book made. So when I went to use the music, I folded it in half and it broke in half. It was so brittle. So then I was afraid to take it over to my trimmer to get it trimmed. So I had to glue it on first and then hand cut the edges and then age it and all of that. And that would have all been easier to do had I waited or had I done it first before I had it bulky. So that's why I decided to go the other route and I'll show you that later. So then you have little ribbon ties and it can be any kind of tie or no tie, whatever you decide. The front part, I used different cording on that and I have this little feather, you know, I make jewelry. So when I have leftover resin from my projects, I don't want to waste it. So I had found this feather um, out on one of my walks. And so I just used a paintbrush and, and painted it one side and then it has to dry 24 hours. So it takes a while, but I just did several coats and it makes a cute little ornament I thought looked really cute. That's that. So then you have the envelope part. And you want to use different sizes of envelopes because that makes it more interesting. And then they can kind of stagger and you see the different papers. Um, because basically it's an it was an envelope and then you've covered everything. So you make it pretty however you, whatever style you want to do. So they just kind of open on each other here, back and forth. Now when I showed the uh, thing the other day, I just had the first three pages cards done. I had them all attached, but they weren't covered. So I want to kind of show you how far you can go with them. They're all little pockets in the end. So you have little pull-outs. Um, and on this one, 
I had mentioned that this was a card from uh, flowers from my husband like 30 years ago. So it was sentimental to me um, because when I did this project, I didn't have six envelopes lying around. So I had to go through my memory box to get them. So it kind of guided me in my theme of this one that I just really wanted it to be old memories. So I saved because this had the address of, of where I worked um, back then on it and where the flowers came from. This is a town I haven't lived in for over 20 years, so um, it was it was kind of sentimental. And then on the back, I just used a stamp that was called Love Letter, but you can, you know, I'm gonna probably add a photo to that and collage it too. So that's that little one. And then this one was a card for my friend Jeannie, and if you know her at all, this looks just like her, I think. She loves vintage and she has a rose room and all of that. I haven't put anything inside yet. I'm gonna, I have a picture of us that I have that I'm gonna put in there. That's that one. And then this one was um, a card from my mother, and she loves angels, so she had put the little um, Cupid stamp on the envelope, so I peeled it off and used it in part of my collage. I really like that. And then it has a cute little pullout with, um, this was like a library card book pocket, and then this is actually a little sleeve you can stick things in. And then the back also has a little pocket. So I think the more little pockets and things. I'm one of those people that I love collecting everything and so I love things with little drawers and all that. It kind of reminds me of like going through my grandma's jewelry box. So it's just kind of a the more you know hidden things. This was another separate tutorial that I watched on how to make these envelopes. So I made it a miniature version but I just used two little brads um, to make the closure with just a little um, like upholstery string, button string. But it opens up and then there's little pullouts at either end. It's a little pocket. And one thing I did, if you can see close up, it's um, it looks like it's stitched. But of course, I couldn't put that in my sewing machine and stitch it. It would have closed the whole thing. So the trick was you stitch the paper on the edge you want to show first and then just glue it down. So I just thought that was a cute little detail. I just, you know, any little, all the little details and layers and finishing touches, they're just little magic. You know, they're just little surprises. So that's that one. And then I had made a bunch of these little file folders. You know, you can make other little envelopes and different things, but these can be glued, you know, here and there and just little little places for tickets or whatever junk you want to put in there. So this one I had put. I've got it paper clipped because I hadn't finished my design. That's a little a little ruler um, cardstock and so I just kind of lay it out how I'm thinking before I glue everything down and, and kind of look at it. And that's as far as I had gotten. I went ahead and covered all the rest of the envelopes um, that I had shown the other day. These weren't covered before. So I collaged these and I left a little window. They were, they were bill paying envelopes. So I left a little window so that way when I put a card in there, which I haven't even made yet, um, then I you can see what's in there. So I thought that's kind of fun. And then these are papers that I, another tutorial I watched was how to coffee stain. And that, I just love how vintage that looks. Since this one was really, I wanted to look, just look old. These were, this paper was um, postcards, French postcards, real ones that I had found at like uh, Speckled Hens or something like that. And I had bought a stack of them. And I don't want to use the originals because they're so beautiful and they are really old and I want to keep be able to keep using them. So I basically put them all out on a on my copier together and then just photocopied it and then coffee stained it. It came out this kind of funny green color because it was just an inkjet printer and I did it in color, but it kind of all got washed out in the coffee staining process. And this was just new ledger paper and it just I just love the color. And it went well together, so that, that, that I liked. And then um, this one was a card from my niece Heather so I have an old dictionary that I'm taking apart that's falling apart. And I used the page that had Heather in it. And then it, of course, has a heart, which is my heart and so forth. So I thought that, I just love that. So I used that page there. And then on the inside paper, because you do line the inside that you're going to see, she works at a winery. So I found this vintage looking great paper. And, and then this is a true story. I can't even believe this. But I was using an old book page for the other side. And I actually had put glue on this side and I was gonna glue this side down and then I saw that it said Heather in the first line so I had to clean it off with a baby wipe and, and reverse it. Um, the paper wasn't quite big enough so I had to use a strip of something else but I just, I thought that was so funny. And then um, this is, was actually the other side of the French postcards and 
why I could buy them. They don't look anything like that. I want you to see how they look compared to. Oh my gosh, take too much time to find them, but um, I wanted to show you. There we go. What they look like. Oh well, I can't put my hands on them real quick. Darn it. I wanted to show you what they looked like before because they don't look this color at all. Again, it, they I photocopied them and it all kind of got washed out with the coffee stain, but I loved how the colors work together. So that's, that's fine. One of these days I'll try to dig those postcards out because they're great. Anyway, so that's the, the book that I was working on. Um, and like I said, there were a few things that I wasn't thrilled about, like when I put my book pages into, my stitching was out here. And I already had... Um, such a mess with with how thick I used uh, more envelopes than Robin recommended three on each side and I used more and that's part of my problem and then I used cardstock which is thicker so it just these kept wanting to come apart so I used washi tape to cover them but I just it's kind of messy to me so it's okay for this one it is a junk journal but it, it made me think about how I might want to do the second one so that's what I'm going to show you now So this next one I did, I j I've started it enough so that I can kind of explain what I did, but then not so that I can show you all the parts and pieces again. So basically you're going to take a regular file folder and I recommend getting one that has the tab on one side or the other because you're going to fold it in half and having one in the middle is going to be kind of odd looking I think but they do make that kind of file folder that's a pocket that's already sealed this one's open um, that's a, like a pocket that has the strip all the way across I think that one might look kind of nice too and then you already kind of have your your pocket made so plain file folder and then six envelopes and they can be all sizes is actually good this one obviously is too big so you're gonna have to trim that because it needs to since they close alternating on each other you can't have it be wider than the edge of this and then you know you don't want it to be too tall so I'll show you how you how you can make them trim them down different sizes but you get your six envelopes you don't want to do this to your mail it makes it harder this one I can salvage because this is going to actually be glued down but it's marginal you don't want to do this because now I can't use this one so from now on be careful when you open your your mail and don't use a, a paper uh, letter opener. So that's envelopes, different sizes, and my file folder. So the first thing that I actually did on mine, I think I'm gonna back up one second. I wanna show you this, cause I just love this. I didn't know this existed. This is a craft mat and it's made out of Teflon and I'll try to find where I bought this one and put the link down. Um, it's great because you can glue, you know, when you glue the edges, you're getting it out on the edge or you're painting or anything. This just wipes down. You wanna have um, baby wipes are huge. Baby wipes and just then kitchen paper towels. Um, because every time I glue something before I do the next one and, and don't wanna get glue on the back side of my next part, I really quickly wipe it down with baby wipe and then dry it with a towel and I'm good to go for the next part. So I love this, gotta have this, and baby wipes. Okay, so back to this. So before I even folded it, I decided from the last one that it would have been easier to do some of the base before I started my project. So I went and before I did anything else, I went ahead and did my distressing all around the edges because part of these are gonna show. Um, you don't know what's gonna show or not, but if you get, at least get the edges to start, you can always add more later, but it gives it that finished thing. So I used Distress Oxide on mine. This is by Tim Holtz also. You can, I used Vintage Photo as the color that I used, and then a blending brush. These are great because it's actually Velcroed on there. Um, and it's a little, you can use a makeup sponge, which I have used before I bought this, but this is nice because it doesn't, um, it doesn't get as messed up as fast as a makeup sponge does. And you can wash these and reuse them. And they're actually uh, Velcroed on there. And when you buy it, it comes with another material one, which I haven't used yet, but this one's great. So basically how you would do that, let me show you on the finished one, is... See, I've gotten my 
all of my edges. See, these are gonna show this edge here. And if I waited until I had it all together and glued, it would have been much harder for me to get in here with this. But basically, you, you start off the mat and you just kind of circular motion and blend it and you could add more. If you use a baby wipe then over this, it really softens it. I didn't on this one, but if you get too much somewhere, you just quickly grab a baby wipe and, and you'll, it'll blend in more, kind of take some off, so that's nice. So I did the whole thing, both sides, even though I haven't done this yet, just to, to get it all finished. Um, and then the next thing I did was I put my paper on here. Now again, I used one, one sheet um, because I like that, it was just fast and easier. But you could collage this too if you want or use torn up book pages or just whatever your imagination goes. You can paint on it and not even do, um, you know, do like a mixed media paint uh, background technique or something and not use paper, that, that would work too. When I did this one, I used um, vellum paper and this one was by Tim Holtz and it's Wallflower vel Vellum. And so it has all these great patterns on it. I wanted to do mine with a, a kind of a vintage floral theme. So I picked this one. And vellum is, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of like a wax paper in a way, but without being waxy, like you can't scratch it like wax paper, but um, you can kind of see through it. So it's real thin, which was nice for this. And that this is actually the paper that I used. And see how it's kind of more yellowed? It's because it's over the um, manila folder. So I love that. And then it kind of gave me my color palette I wanted. So that was good. So um, I should mention one thing though, before I put the paper on, I did go ahead and decide where I wanted my ties so that I would um, put that inside the file folder. And I guess you could do it after this paper because I don't have it. Because mine was vellum, you would be able to see the tie through it so I actually put it in between my file folders before, in here before I closed it, right? So I could do that that, pa that paper first, I'm trying to remember all this. Um, so when I did that, I used Mod Podge. I would not use Elmer's glue because it's too, th it's too thin and um, it kind of makes bubbles. It wets your papers too much and then you get kind of wrinkles and bubbles in it, my, my experience. So I would use Mod Podge or Matte Medium um, to, Matte Medium is, let's see. I just got some, so I haven't even used it, but it has, a, it has even a thicker texture than um, the Mod Podge. And it does go on really nice. It will keep things, you know, s smoother, I think, but, I, I use Mod Podge just because it's probably cheaper. But I just put it in a little plastic container thingy that I can toss. I keep it this for a while, so like this was from yesterday. And it dries, I can just add more to it and it just keeps drying and getting thicker till I till it, it grows and I throw it away with a new one. But I use a dedicated brush that I actually write on it so that I, in case I don't clean it right away, I usually, I have a thing of water right here, but in case I don't, if I'm gluing a lot, and I don't want to ruin every brush I have that looks like this. So you would just put some on. Now I, because this was one piece and large, I started at one end, just did a stripe, and then I put the vellum on, and then you just use a plastic card and just like your wallpaper and get all the wrinkles and bubbles out as you go. Then fold it, do a little another little strip, and keep going, and then. It's just the glue stays wet while it's you're getting the whole thing attached. The other thing that I love that I I just happen to have because I used to also uh, make uh, cover lamp shades are these little clips that you I used for lamp shades. And once you put it on, just put a little clip along the edge, and just that little bit will just keep it, it like this perfectly sealed edge. It doesn't take very long. So you really, by the time I do that and go get the materials for the next part. I can take these off and I'm good to go. Now, if you have a little spot that doesn't connect good, like see how that's maybe kind of like not exactly attached? They make these little bind line applicator bottles. I just love this. It has a little pin in the lid, if you can see that. Kind of get the angle on it there. So it just lets you get right into the tiniest part where you need glue. And then you have to though, I, I put the glue on and then before I even squeeze it together, I put this lid back on because 
if it dries in there at all, it's going to get clogged. And then, because I, I have another bottle I kind of ruined, you squeeze it trying to get it out and you end up kind of breaking the seal in there and then it doesn't work anymore. So my recommendation is before you use it, always check to see if you get air through there easy and then you know it's not clogged. If it doesn't at all, don't force it. Take the lid off and go soak it in hot water and get it cleaned out before you try to use it or you'll ruin your bottle. And these, these weren't cheap, but I'm telling you they're great. So that's that part, okay? So we have that done. Then the next thing you wanna do is you can go ahead and put your ribbons on. Um, I used, cause I wanted this vintage floral tea staining thing. This was um, just some cotton fabric. Uh, I think I got it at Walmart. I was making masks earlier this year, like everyone. And I had this left over and I just loved the color of it. So I, did, I didn't wanna toss my scraps. I just ripped them into ribbon, length, ri ribbon widths. And when you rip it, it goes with the grain because it's it's woven and then you just have this nice frayed edge so it's it's easy and then I, I just have a bunch of it that I'll use for projects so and that another recycling so that was good so you figure out where you want it I did about halfway and I did the two for the book part and then I did another one in there which I did that one after clearly um, for the the envelope part because this is going to get covered with um, my envelopes. So there's one on that side and then one on this side. So you have to do that before you put your envelopes on or it won't be hidden. So after that, next thing is the envelope fun part. Um, now, one thing I should say is I didn't do it on this one. I could do it now, but I'm not really ready to is if I were to put the pages on the inside now, then when I do my binding, I won't see it here. And I didn't on this one already, so it's too late. But I think what I'll do is when I do my binding, instead of having the knots and stuff on the outside, I'll try to keep it clean and do my knots on the inside. But the reason I haven't finished it yet is I wanted to show you this is gonna be really cute. I saw this on another journal tutorial. Instead of using one kind of paper, she used different varieties and had them all staggered. They were different sizes, like this is actually a brown paper bag. I'll iron this so it's more flat, but that's kind of why I haven't done it yet. Um, I also want to put some maybe thicker mixed media paper or some drawing paper or something in there, just to have a variety. But these other papers that I've pulled out are some of the ledger paper. These are all the ones I coffee stained. And when you coffee stain them, I just love the sound. It's kind of crispy. Um, they, they come out really, lumpy and bumpy. These have all been ironed already and you can still see how they're, they have that aged look. So I just like that. So I wanna add some more before I put them in here is why I haven't done that yet. So we'll put that aside. Okay, now the fun part, the envelope part. So I have my six envelopes. I did three on this side and then I'll do three on the other side. Um, I wanted to not do these yet so you can see them in, apart. <clears throat> so my first thing um, was that it helped me to be very organized with my papers. The other one I wasn't, and I kind of, you know, just picked them out as I went along. This one I kind of wanted to be a certain theme and a certain color palette and all that. So I went and I pulled a bunch of papers out, including some embellishment type things that were all in the, the little flowers and stuff that I might want to use, just to kind of help give me a, a color palette that I wanted to work with. When I did this, and she, Robin recommended this in, in her tutorial, was to use thinner papers, not heavy cardstock, for as much of it as you can because you're gonna bulk it up with junk. So I went ahead and tried to use for the, um, the at least one side of the envelope, and then you do a liner on the inside, thin paper, and then on the other one I did cardstock, and the inside pullout is gonna be cardstock. To, just because you're gonna be pulling that in and out so you want it to be a little sturdier. So the first thing, first things first, is you get all of your envelopes and you decide the order that you want them to be in because some of them you're gonna have to trim. Like this one was a, a bill envelope. Of course, it was much longer and I wanted it higher on the thing. So you, you do your layout first before you've even picked papers out and that will help you with the, what paper you wanna pick out because of what order they're in. So I put the biggest ones on the on the back. This one's gonna go here. 
This one will go in front, and then this one. So you figure out what kind of order you want them, and then that'll help you too to decide which side you want the opening to be, because they're gonna be little pockets. So I want them to all kind of alternate too. So this one I did at an angle, this one I did on the edge, this one I did at the top, right next, then an angle again, the edge and the top. So you can do whatever you want, but that's just my thought process, okay? So then the next thing I did was, uh, I knew that the, uh, the first thing that she had us do was the inside of this envelope, the liner, because, I'll take this one apart so you can see. Okay, so you have a basic envelope, right? And now I've cut it the angle, but I wanted to leave this part big because I want to see that paper. I think in the other one, yeah, I left it big too. You could cut it all the way, both sides off if you want, but I didn't. Okay, and then here's the flap. This is the part that's gonna be glued to the file folder. So you have this floppy part. So when you have this as a pocket too from the front, you're gonna see the back part of the envelope. So you make a liner for it. I made it easy on myself and I just used book page for all of them because you're not gonna see very much of I them. Mean, you want them to look nice, but it took me so long to pick out all the papers to coordinate the way I wanted that I made it easy on myself and I just did um, book page for all of them. So you make you cut that to fit inside and then basically you would, you would glue that down. I just used glue stick to do that part because you're gonna be gluing another piece on here anyway. So you just, you would get that glued down there. Now the one thing that I didn't do correctly, and so I will mention it now, is I think it would be smart to go ahead and put a piece of tape here. It, it could just be regular tape, it could be washi tape. Uh, it's gonna be hidden, so regular tape is just as well. Something that's gonna be permanent though. Okay. And I'll show you what I did to fix it because I didn't do it on the other side. So you would tape that down so that it, your envelope's closed. And then that way this pocket is really a pocket. And the next thing you want to do is you're going to get papers for the fronts of all of them. This you're going to see. So I started with this one. Okay. And then I wanted them all to kind of look nice together. So I picked out all my front papers together. Right, And then, once I had all the fronts and I liked that, then I picked out my back paper. This one I did go ahead and use cardstock. And this is actually this same paper, it's a Tim Holtz paper. It's the same paper, but when he does his pads, he does them in different um, sizes, which I just, I love that idea. So this one was actually just a new one I got. Oops, it's a card that is called memoranda. And so you'll get patterns that are large and then you'll get the same ones, but they'll be in like, oh, I've cut them out of here already. That'll be like four. So th that's the smaller one. So I went ahead and I cut those apart and then he even does them even smaller. So you get like little, um, These are different papers, but little de little decorative sizes of the same thing, so you can use those as embellishments. So that's really, I love that. So these were all the quarter size ones that I went ahead and cut up because um, I knew I'd want to use them that way. So that's the papers. So then I went to do the back sides, like I said. So that would be this one. Now this is the part that's going to get glued down, so the back side just goes here, this way. So for me, I thought it would be easier if I put all the papers on and then I glued the envelopes to the file folder. In the tutorial that I watched, it showed you gluing all the envelopes together. Once you knew your order, you were actually gluing all the envelopes flaps together. I'm just grabbing any just to show you. So you would put one flap on the other flap and glue those together and then you glued that to your book and then you covered them with paper. Well. That just made it harder in a way. I mean, the good side of it was that you could see where all where they all were. But I think to actually get them glued down and all the edges aged like I want was easier to do when they were um, apart. 
So that's how I did it. And I, I think it came out nice and clean on my spine instead of how my other one was. So um, basically I, I went ahead and, and glued it all together. And then if you have, you want to do a notch or anything, it's still open enough to get in there and do that. In fact, all my notches, I made those before I even had this part glued together, you know, put together because I could get my, your big, I use a big uh, circle punch for that. And it's just easier to get it into something that's not already sealed. I mean, I can do it on this one, but it's not the same, you know. So smaller ones like this is pretty skinny. That's hard to get, fit that in there. So once you have all of your things done, like I said, I did some of the angle. I actually, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually even went and took my book paper and all of that, and I aged that first before I even glued it in. It just made it so much easier. Um, and then to use to use this for a trimmer, in case you don't, I used a big, um, I have a big guillotine trimmer that I use for a lot of stuff just because it's big and it works great. But this is a really handy tool also that I have. This is um, from Recollections. It's like a scrapbooking photo trimmer. And um, it just has, it has a ruler and guides on it. But the neat thing about this one, it has a cutting blade and it has a scoring blade. So if you want to make greeting cards or something, you would line it up where you want your score mark, like a trifold thing or something. And you just score it and then you get a nice perfect fold. So that was that. Oh, one thing, folding. So. Um, after you had put the inside liner paper on here, you need to fold it in half. Um, if you don't have a bone folder like this, you want to get all of your edges and creases nice and, and tight just because it gives you a nice base to work with. You don't have to use that. You can use the edge of your scissors works too. So just you want to make sure you get that crease nice and tight though just because it's, it's always good to start with a nice sturdy base. Okay, so back to the envelopes. I've got them all notched and covered and, right? So then you just are gonna start with the smallest one because it's gonna end up on top and you decide where it's gonna go. Like this one I think I wanted about here. So I would glue with my Mod Podge all the way to the edge. And of course you have to imagine I've already distressed this with my ink you know you can do it after but it, it's just easier I think when these are all in pieces to work on so once you do that again use these little clips and I kind of would let that dry for just a minute or so before I put the next one in you know and then I do the same thing with the next one now this one just for shape wise I did um, I wanted this one to look torn So if you cut all your pieces, your inside liner and all those pieces, cut those first and put them all together and then do your tear and the tear's the same for all of them. The other thing that I kind of wish I would have done, and I could always do it still, is to have it be a little longer. Do the tear, you know, go like this, do the tear, have it be hanging out here. And then when you when you pull it up, it's a little bit longer. I think that would look nice. I can still do that because I haven't glued it on. I can just put another strip of paper here if I want. And I think I might do that because that, I think that looks good. Then I u actually used, as I was cutting these, like I said, I used my envelope as a template for the, the cover papers. The other thing I did different was I had a little edge that wrapped around. That made my spine look really nice and finished, and then I made sure I, I antiqued that really good before I glued it down. But I just, otherwise you end up with, um, you know, a cut piece that might not fit perfectly here. I'm kind of a perfectionist, I'll admit it. So you don't have to do that, but it, it just means you have to have one more piece that you don't have gaps in, right? So this just made it a little cleaner for me. Um, then the other thing I did was I used the book page that I had cut for the inside as my template for my inside pocket card thing that pulls out. So this one, um, you just you, I used my my book page, but then obviously it's a little bit. You want it to be a tiny bit narrower so that it slides in and out easy. So I just I used the book page as the template, and then I cut a little bit more off both sides just to just to get it right. So that's that. It seemed like there was something else I wanted to say about 
about the papers, but I think not. I think I wanted to show you what I when I when I made my mistake of not sealing my back side of my envelope first for these three. My fix was to use washi tape. So I I had already put these two on when I realized, oh, this envelope is still open over here. So I used um, decorative washi tape, and I really actually like how this one turned out because it really, you know, it looks intentional. It goes with the thing. This one was some script on it. And if you don't know what washi tape is, it's, um, it's like decorative masking tape. It has a lower tack than like masking tape, but I use it on my, you're my Facebook people, you know, I use it on my packaging for my, if you buy jewelry, everything comes gift wrap, whether it's a gift or not, because it's a gift for you. And so I use washi tape, um, and then that way on my gift boxes, there's a, there's a washi tape that goes around the actual box, and then there's one that I do that goes around the whole thing that holds the lid to the bottom of the box. You can undo that from the bottom and take the lid off and then put it back without anyone knowing it if it is a gift and you want to peek at it first. That's just a little side note there. But anyway, you can find this at Michael's. I ordered uh, some of it online, some of the the more fun prints and stuff. You see, I could I didn't find it at Michael's, so I just ordered some online. But washi tape, fun thing to use. So I used that here, and then on the inside one, I decided I didn't want to see the washi tape on this one that I hadn't put on yet. So I actually had this envelope already there and it was open. I went ahead and put washi tape down. You can see it here. And then I put this card on. And then I put its washi tape on. So it solved my problem. It's decorative. Um, the one that I used for these two are, is kind of a, a birch aged wood or something looking. And it's kind of, um, it's kind of thin, you know, see-through. So it kind of blended in real well. I didn't really want it to be a focal point, so that's that. Okay, so then once you have these envelopes on, imagine these are here on the other side. When I when I I got really perfectionisty, I guess, and when I when I picked the papers, I actually went like this. I put them here, and I went, okay, do I like how that looks? Oh yeah, and then this one's gonna open. Do I like how that looks? And then I did that one. And see, I just made sure I, I liked the color scheme going on the whole way, right? Even though it kind of changes. So that's me and my silly ways. So once you finish that, then I'm going to have flaps showing here. So the last thing I need to do then is cover this back center part, which in my other one were the French postcards, which actually might look good on this one too. But... Um, you can do collage, one piece, whatever you want to do. So I think that's about it for what I have to show you um, today. I have to finish this. Maybe I'll do another one at the end where I have it finished, finished. I think I'm going to, you know, use this one as a gift. So I may add some little pockets and make sure all the pullouts are how I want them and have it all decorated. And what a great gift that is for someone. I mean, there may be somebody that likes to to journal and that kind of thing, but they're not really heavily into the whole crafting part of it, you know? So um, I hope this inspires you uh, to go out and get your own crafting thing going. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. Do a thumbs up if you like it. That'll let me know if I should keep doing these once in a while. Um, if you have something that you've seen, whether it's even jewelry related or or this that I've done, I may go back in some of the other projects that I had posted photos on my Facebook page, I may go back and do more of a show and tell in a video because it kind of lets you see it a little bit better than just a, a photograph because my photographs are not the best. That's one area I need to work on. But anyway, I hope you had uh, fun watching this and go out and create something. Bye.